Man the decks and fire up the engines. Today's epic yachts are making waves with insanely extravagant extras. It goes up against any high-end home of any caliber. This boat will cater to anything you want. From a yacht in California big enough to carry a car. I wanted to be able to travel anywhere in the world. To a high-performance vessel in Florida that doubles in size at the push of a button. You take a 42-foot boat and within 12 to 14 seconds it becomes an 80-foot boat. These modern-day ship magnates are digging deep. These are actually Italian doors, and they're over $400,000 each. And building big. It was 108 feet, and then we decided to lengthen it another 40. From a deluxe cruiser that can handle Mother Nature's nastiest storms. You're not going to end up sinking this thing. To a mega yacht with its own onboard garage and 80-foot fishing companion. It's supersized seafaring on epic yachts. Yachts have always been an American status symbol, but today's floating villas are leaving their predecessors in the wake. Today's mega yachts are bigger, stronger, and definitely more luxurious than anything that's come before. When it comes to cruising the Pacific off the coast of California, San Diego is a popular launching spot. The harbor here is filled with one mega yacht after another, and they come in every shape and size. But this 140-foot vessel is in a class by itself. Lightstar is a fully custom, one-off yacht that was built up in San Francisco that was tailored to uh, my niece. There's nothing like this boat. Everything that you can dream of is on here. Every square inch of the Lightstar was custom built to Howard Light Jr.'s specifications. As the owner of a California winery, Howard has expensive tastes. He pilots one of the fastest helicopters in the country, and when it came to his own yacht, Howard went full throttle. The results? A one-of-a-kind floating masterpiece, featuring four decks, three bars, five staterooms, 11 bathrooms, and of course, quarters for the onboard crew. A must for a vessel of this magnitude. And speaking of size, somewhere along the way, this mega yacht wasn't nearly big enough. Lightstar was purchased back in 1999, and then it was refitted back in 2009. It was 108 feet, and then we decided to lengthen it another 40. Why add another 40 feet to a yacht that already tops out at more than 100 feet? My helicopter is about 45 feet long. That's right. Howard ordered the steel hulled yacht cut in two and extended by 40 feet so he'd have a place to park his Italian-built Augusta A109 helicopter. This process not only challenged his builders, it took four years to complete. When the chopper's on board, it's parked on the top deck, also called the fly deck. When it's not along for the trip, the helipad doubles as a dance floor and music can be pumped all throughout the ship. Underneath the helideck is a complete nightclub level stereo system, and uh, it's awesome. I believe we have the only helideck in the world that's equipped with subwoofers. I usually get myself in trouble with the captain. I'm really into loud music. What else goes with a party on the top deck of an epic mega yacht? How about a sky lounge with the first of this yacht's three bars? an outdoor barbecue to grill up some steaks while watching the latest game on TV that can disappear into the ceiling when not in use. And what's a party without a way to unwind? Well, you gotta have a big jacuzzi, and this is one of the biggest jacuzzis in town. They call the Grand Canyon, which is kinda cool. And at a cool price, this eight-seat jacuzzi will set you back seven grand. One level down on the bridge deck, another outdoor seating area. And inside, another place to kick back and watch some TV. Thanks to two more large drop-down televisions. We wanted everything to be kind of like real clean, so the retractable TVs are flush with the ceiling. Altogether, Howard installed 17 televisions throughout the yacht. Just behind the TV area is the second bar and one of those 11 bathrooms. Down the hall from the salon is the pilot house where the captain can keep a close eye on everything thanks to a half dozen cameras and an extensive radar system. It's got a 125 mile range with a mouse, push button keyboard. 
the screen here, next one is uh, your Simon system. Gives you data on everything on board from generators to tanks. And when the captain wants a little break from the party on board, he can simply push a button. The yacht's main level, or boat deck, is home to Howard's private office and master suite. It occupies almost a quarter of the main deck and is big enough for a California king-sized bed, twin walk-in cedar closets, and a gas fireplace. The master bath has a whirlpool tub almost deep enough to swim in. Down the hall, the galley, large enough to cater the grandest parties and guests. It's a complete Sub-Zero Wolf galley. We've had chefs that have catered for former presidents, but also the occasional microwave pizza at the end of the night sometimes. Attached to the galley is another full bar, complete with a wine chiller and a dining room that can seat up to 12 people. Just beyond the spacious main salon, the second of two sets of custom-made automatic doors lead to another outdoor dining area. These are actually Italian doors, and they're over $400,000 each, and it's insane. A winding teak staircase leads you down to the lower level and one of four large guest rooms each with their own ensuite bathrooms. And if working out while sailing the seas is your thing, a game room at the end of the hall doubles as an exercise room with its own steam room tucked away in the back. A yacht this size requires powerful engines. There are three massive generators and two monster engines with a capacity of 1,200 gallons of fuel. That's enough to go from San Diego to Hawaii without refueling. They're Detroit diesel engines. Uh, series 60s, uh, they're pretty uh, fuel efficient. Burn 12 gallons an hour at 10 knots, which is nice. Howard wanted this yacht built tough, and that's exactly what he got. What's nice about this boat is that it's completely a uh, steel build. It's really strong. It's an actually a really good expedition boat that can go pretty much around the world. He also wanted one-of-a-kind details, which he had brought in from all corners of the planet. That flooring in the main salon came from halfway around the world. The carpet right here is New Zealand wool. This carpet here was like worth 45,000 bucks. It doesn't catch fire and it never changes color, it never fades. Howard even handpicked all of the woodwork himself. All 16 different varieties of rare hardwoods found throughout the yacht. I wanted to find the rarest woods in the world and there's a certain place that I found down here in San Diego, and we have wood from Africa that actually mimics the animal print of the animals. It's called quilted macaray. We have ebony wood. Every room has its own nature. There's nothing like this boat. To get the capability of this boat from entertainment to fishing to flying helicopters to oversized jacuzzis, this is it. This boat will cater to anything you want. From top-of-the-line technology to hundreds of custom details that Howard brought in from all over the world to outfit the ultimate floating villa, what does it cost to get exactly what you want on a one-of-a-kind custom yacht? That's coming up. Plus, a super yacht so big it has its own onboard garage jammed with water toys. Light Star Yacht is 140 feet long with four decks and sleeps 10 guests and six crew members. What does it cost to create a vessel that contains four staterooms and a master suite with 11 bathrooms, three bars, 17 televisions, a hot tub, a state-of-the-art sound system, and its very own helipad? The custom Light Star's estimated value is eight and a half million dollars. There's no shortage of super yachts in the waters of South Florida, but when this luxury vessel hits the bay, heads turn, jaws drop, and hearts stop. Stretching an epic 164 feet, this floating palace is called Wheels. She's as big as a small ocean liner and truly unique. This is the, the, the one-of-a-kind boat. They haven't done another one like it. One-of-a-kind is exactly what Wheels owner Rick Hendrick wanted. As owner of a NASCAR team, David says the name was a natural tribute to the sport Hendrick loves. The name Wheels has to do with the automotive industry that Mr. Hendrick's involved with, and it just seemed to be a natural for us. David's been with the Hendrick family for 10 years and worked closely with Trinity Yachts to create Wheels. 
And although Trinity has built two other yachts this size, David says Wheels leads the pack. When docked next to the palm trees, the boat's massive scale becomes evident. This is the largest build that I've been involved in. I got to select all of the pieces of equipment that I got to put in the boat, so basically had carte blanche to do that. Between her four levels, Wheels boasts three sun decks, three wet bars, an eight-person jacuzzi, six staterooms, plus extra quarters to house up to eight staff, a commercial-grade galley, enough seats to feed a group of 50, and 15 drop-down TVs. But for all the lavish space on board this mega vessel, one of the coolest features is tucked away below deck in the stern. Get ready for this. It's the ultimate man cave for water toys, an onboard garage. This custom build holds a 17-foot tender boat, two wave runners, and three sea bobs. It even has its own crane that easily lifts the machines in and out of the water. Installing a garage below the deck meant the builders had to redesign the guts of the boat to make room at the back of the vessel. We had to add a frame in order to uh, put in the garage the way we wanted. That just opened a whole lot of other possibilities to rearrange things down there. It's just a matter of getting all the pieces together and then figuring out the puzzle. The owner and David insisted on redundancy aboard wheels. We have redundant controls. We have redundant steering. I have two different steering pumps. One's AC, one's DC. We have two different generators, two different radars, two different sets of cartography. You, you back up everything that you can. The generators are 125 kVA. They're each powered by a six-cylinder John Deere diesel, enough to run probably about three houses. Two Caterpillar engines each produce 2,200 horsepower. Engines like these also come with a big price tag, often running as much as 200 grand each. Just beyond the engine room are four full-sized guest suites, each with its own ensuite bathroom. And tucked away in the bow are the crew quarters. Up the stairs. The main salon is all about kicking back, where you can belly up to the first of three wet bars and catch the latest race on a pop-up TV. And if the 60-inch plasma TV doesn't grab your attention, maybe the finish on the credenza will. This cabinet here is actually made from Stingrays. Stingray hides can run as much as two grand per cabinet. On this yacht, guests never go hungry. When you're cooking three meals a day for 20 people, it's a sure bet the galley will be in constant use. Chef Christian Russo has been working on yachts for nine years, but he's never had a galley like this. It's got a lot of great equipment. I get all the, all the cool bells and whistles that I don't normally get in a lot of other places. And I'd say probably my most favorite thing of the galley is this walk-in cooler. It gives me the space to uh, stock up for long trips out at sea. Just down this hall, a private office leads to the King Master Suite, which is larger than the bedrooms you'd find in most homes. It has his and hers bathrooms, hers with a soaking jacuzzi, and his with a multi-head shower. This uh, marble that you see is, while it looks real heavy, is actually a light composite that's fiberglass infused. And the method that we use with this actually saves us about four tons per boat. Almost everything on wheels is automated, from the retractable televisions, each with satellite receivers, to the window shades, and even the curved doors. More dining and drinking awaits on the Sky Lounge. It's a place where everybody usually meets in the evening before dinner. Ready for a soak at day's end? Head up to the sun deck and plunge into the eight-person jacuzzi. Or throw a steak on the grill and toast another epic day at sea. Weighing in at 456 tons, Wheels is capable of transatlantic journeys. Of course, fueling her for a trip takes some effort. We have a fuel capacity of 16,500 gallons. That requires approximately three large tanker trucks to fill us up. And my average fuel bill for a total fill up is about $50,000. When Wheels hits the high seas, she doesn't go alone. She travels in tandem with an 80-foot sport fishing yacht called Real Wheels. Real Wheels hosts its own crew and costs. Are you ready for this? Around $7 million on its own. So what do you think her big sister with her own garage and private chef is worth? That's coming up next.
And then, an epic speedboat that almost doubles in size right before your eyes. Wheels is a one-of-a-kind super yacht. Measuring an epic 164 feet, she's entirely custom-built with three sun decks on three levels, four dining areas, three bars, a hot tub, a huge galley to help those on board wine and dine, and don't forget the hidden garage at her stern filled with water toys. Wheels glides into port at nearly $29 million. Fort Lauderdale, Florida is both a party hotspot and an American boating mecca. Some of the world's most expensive watercraft can be seen cruising these waters. One in particular combines the best of both worlds, luxury living and the need for speed. But it's best known for its ability to expand on demand. It's called the Wider 42 and is the brainchild of Italian shipbuilder Tilly Antonelli. He had a dream and a vision to bring an open day cruiser with the ability to expand and give more living space once at anchor. Constructed of super lightweight carbon fiber and fiberglass, it's a high performance powerboat that hits speeds of up to 50 knots or 57 miles per hour. With state of the art entertainment spaces above and high tech living quarters below, there's much more to the wider than meets the eye. This is a yacht even James Bond would envy. With the push of a button, the main deck totally transforms. Tables disappear and walls give way as the streamlined yacht expands into a multi-dimensional aquatic pleasure craft with a terrace. You take a 42-foot boat and within 12 to 14 seconds, it becomes an 80-foot boat with a 22-foot beam. Darren Datsun distributes the wider 42 in the U.S. for Antonelli. He had a problem with other smaller boats that he'd been on over the years that he could go and have good performance, but when he arrived to anchor and want to share the day with the family, there was just no space. Two carbon fiber beams extend from its sides to create a terrace large enough to hold 22 people. The terrace system wasn't an easy project to undertake. It had never been done before in the industry. Nobody had ever taken on the quest of expanding a boat like a motorhome in the USA. As the terrace expands outward, buoyancy compensators descend downward into the water. Those extensions act to balance the boat and keep it from rocking or rolling. You can imagine with people shifting weight at a party or dancing around on the deck, it's incredibly stable. Everything on board operates with the push of a button. The yacht's built-in deck, party-ready table and seats also appear and disappear as needed. The deck furniture has three positions. The first position is the table and dining position. The second position lowers the table so we can fold the sun pads back to have another 10 by 10 foot sun pad. The next position is completely storing the table into the floor. Then we place this second seat on top of the, uh, the main seat allowing the full 22-foot beam to be exposed. The wider 42 is not only versatile, it's a study in efficiency and design. The vessel's constructed with the deck and hull molded together and it's completely watertight. And then on top of the deck is the terrace system. So the terrace system fits on board the deck and is completely sealed away from water intrusion into the hull the double-stepped hull, and at cruise speed, it's extremely economical, burning only 28 gallons an hour. Onboard systems are all at the pilot's fingertips and controlled through a screen located in the center of the yacht's wheel. The actual wheel is the same as those used in Formula One racing. This multifunctional steering wheel was exclusively designed by the wider team to allow you to monitor all systems on board within the field of view while running at speed. This allows you also to ergonomically trim the vessel with trim tabs and uh, harness and surface drive without removing your hands from the steering wheel. When hunger strikes and you feel like throwing a little something on the grill, look no further than here. Underneath the helm seat area, we have another cooking area, which consists of a teppanyaki grill, 
cutting board and a sink so you can barbecue outdoors. Then under, underneath we have fridge and a large cooler. There's a more serious galley below deck, but again, everything is tucked away until you need it. The designers at Wider wanted to keep the galley completely hidden. So within these drawers, you have a refrigerator and freezer, cooktop and sink, and then also a microwave oven. The yacht is all about transformation. White leather couches in the bow convert to a full-sized bed area. Instead of building in wooden furniture with cabinets up on the top here, we chose to use the custom leather bags designed by the wider team to allow you to take the bags home, pack the bags with what you need for the weekend, bring them, install them, and use the bags. A flat screen TV is built into the door that leads to the bathroom so it can be open to face the bed. The head has a full shower as well as a sink and vanity. A sun deck at the stern hides a hangar large enough to store some scuba gear and a small inflatable boat. The hatch comes up and a launch pad lowers into the water. Twin Cummins 5.9 turbocharged diesel engines offer a perfect power to weight ratio for the wider 42's hull size. The engines are ventilated through special intake areas above the pilot's control pin. In order to gain maximum horsepower from the engines, we need to provide the right air quality to the engines, and we're able to do that through the air vents above the T-top, which takes clean air, doesn't take any salt water, and we funnel it down through these large columns in the T-top, and that pressurizes the engine room to the uh, correct amount of air that the engines, engines need at full power. Almost every feature of the wider 42 has been reimagined and re-engineered. It's really two boats in one. So how much does the yacht of the future cost? The price is next. Then, if the gold leaf tiles don't thrill you, maybe the onboard parking space for the matching car will. The wider 42 can cut through the water at speeds up to 50 knots and can transform to include a 22-foot wide terrace designed for entertaining. At the push of a few buttons, tables and chairs convert to a sun deck or reveal a stash of hidden toys. What does all this luxury living and high-tech performance cost? This racing boat that pulls double duty costs $1.4 million. With one of the largest recreational boat harbors on the west coast, the affluent city of Newport Beach, California, is a maritime mecca. It's also the home port for one of the most versatile yachts to sail the high seas, the Tortuga. A 76-foot Nordhaven custom yacht owned by Doug Jackson and his wife, Jean. Doug's number one dream was to build a boat strong and steady enough to take him anywhere his heart desires. And as a retired airline pilot, he wanted to be at the helm. I wanted to be able to travel anywhere in the world, and I wanted to be able to handle the boat myself. So I've been building this boat in my head for about the last 25 years, and they made it happen for me. He turned to Jim Leishman to design and build a boat by the Nordhaven Company that wouldn't fail no matter what, a process that took two years with numerous trips back and forth to the boat yard in Taiwan. The Jacksons regularly set sail with no crew on board. So Doug insisted on a yacht that would operate easily on long voyages while still affording the comforts of a luxury home. For the Jacksons, that means a jacuzzi with ocean views, high-tech entertaining spaces, luxurious staterooms, and of course, a car. I hate renting cars when I go places. I don't need to go out and rent a car or worry about having transportation. And they had the room on the deck, so I thought, you know, why not? especially when your boat has a built-in David crane worth $65,000. It's capable of lifting 2,500 pounds, easily moving a car or a 12-foot boat. But as long as you're at it, why not choose a car that matches your boat? The boat's big, it's green, it's slow, it's sturdy, and Tortuga means tortoise or the turtle. Turtles are good luck. So I figure it's a name we'll never get tired of. The Tortuga is an epic four decks high. The top deck is one of five areas throughout the yacht 
where Doug is able to pilot the boat. I've got one on each wing, one on the flybridge, one on the swim step, and then after I got one in the engine room. The pilot house on the mid deck has both a sitting area and a day cabin, which includes a bedroom and a big bathroom. It's the favorite spot for the only other regular passenger, the Jackson's dog, Captain Jack. If I'm up on watch, Jack's up with me. He never, uh, he's never missed a watch, so uh, like I say, he's probably the most dependable crew that I've had on board. The Jacksons weren't originally going to include a spa on board, but this mid-deck whirlpool has become one of their favorite spots. The master suite is on the main level and takes up the entire front section of the yacht. A steam shower in the master bath has 24 karat gold in the tiles and dual shower heads at $400 per square foot. Doug paid a pretty penny for this luxury, topping off at around $30,000. His and hers sinks of Italian marble are a nod to two different requirements. My wife's about 5'5", five five, and uh, so she's got her sink, she's got her vanity with the pull-out chair, and then we've got my sink, which is about six inches taller. Also on the main deck, the Tortuga's galley, which is fully equipped with every top-of-the-line appliance. The only difference between this and a land-based kitchen is that the Tortuga is built for choppy water, with things like a batten-down coffee maker and in-drawer microwave. And Doug is also able to tame the sea by turning it into drinking water. He installed not one, but two reverse osmosis water makers, which will make up to 1,600 gallons of fresh water a day. But fresh water at your fingertips comes at a high price. Each system runs $16,000. Eight different exotic hardwoods were used throughout the Tortuga. We had a lot of fun with it, actually. We've got ebony, we've got tiger wood, we've got zebra wood, we have burled maple. The furniture in the salon is ebony, handmade by the shipbuilders for Tortuga. Doug insisted that the television here retract for the same reason the TV in the master suite can be hidden behind a mirror. I'm not a big fan of looking at TV sets when they're not operating. We can keep it out of, out of sight, and we want to watch it. It pops up. Doug likes to keep an eye on what's happening below the surface. And on the main level's back deck, he specially designed a spot that makes every deep sea dive a breeze. I'm an avid scuba diver, so we had a tank rack put in the back with an air fill so I can fill the tanks in the rack. We also put a hot shower on the swim step and a wetsuit locker so you can come up off the boat take off your gear, wash it right there. There are two more staterooms and baths on the lower level along with the engine room. Doug never took chances piloting an airplane, and he wasn't about to start when it came to his dream yacht. I'm kind of a uh, function over form kind of guy. All the beautiful interior stuff, that's my wife. The functioning stuff, that's me. After years of flying commercial jets, Jackson believes in backup systems, so he insisted his yacht be built like an airplane. I probably have the most overbuilt Nordhaven in the fleet. I did some of the things with the electrical system that are not unlike uh, airplane electrical systems. And not one, but two 400 horsepower Detroit diesel engines. Together, the price tag on those totaled $240,000. If one engine breaks down, he can still run at full speed and uh, continue on to his destination without having to, having to call for help or turn around. In the air, you can try to fly around turbulence. In the water, you often have no choice when it comes to dodging waves. So Doug insisted on an active stabilizing system to keep the vessel from rolling in rough seas. The stabilizers work like turtle fins, moving up and down on whichever side needs it. Dependability is everything for Doug. Tortuga flies the 10,000-mile flat, a milestone reached within two years of launching. She was built for distance, not speed. The 130-ton Tortuga is unlike any other yacht at sea. How much does it cost to combine the comforts of a luxury home with every safety and backup system money can buy? That's next. Then, a world-cruising luxury yacht strong enough to take on the worst of Mother Nature. The 76-foot Tortuga is a yacht like no other. She's big enough to carry her own car and easy enough to be handled by a single captain. With 
two engines and redundant safety features, she is one of the safest yachts on the high seas. And even though this sea turtle is built for distance, slow and steady wins the race at six million dollars. Most mega yacht owners dream of sailing around the world, but truth be told, few private vessels are equipped to handle the rigors of such a voyage. Tim Alls was determined to change all that. As a second generation fishing boat builder, he has taken his special skills and created a Seattle based super yacht that can handle the toughest maritime conditions. Tim drew from his experience building fishing vessels that can withstand the rigors of the Alaskan and Bering Seas. When we made the transition into the yachts, we brought the fishing boat philosophy with us, which is keep it simple, make it much stronger than it needs to be. The people that want to buy a boat like this are serious cruisers that might want to go all the way around the world. And they were going to have their family on board, so they're looking for something that basically is rugged, tough, can go anywhere and do anything. The 92-foot-long All Seas combines the durability of a commercial fishing vessel with all the trappings of a five-star luxury cruiser. It goes up against any high-end home of any caliber, and yet it's very warm and it's very inviting on the inside. With four levels and 2,200 square feet of living space on board, the All Seas has five staterooms, seven bathrooms, a galley that spans the ship's 26-foot width, and it's all controlled by an epic central computer system specially designed by Tim himself to monitor all the systems on the yacht. It all starts at the top here on the All Seas with its massive flybridge. Because we're so wide and we're so stable, we're able to build a huge flybridge. It's got a six and seven person hot tub up there as well. It's big enough for 20 passengers to sit and watch the world go by. The pilot house is located one level down on the third deck. It's just as big as the fly deck, but enclosed to keep the elements out. Here, technology rules. Take a good look around. You won't find a steering wheel here. The rudders on this boat are almost seven feet tall. They're massive, which makes it a very maneuverable boat. When you get something that large and you've got as much horsepower as we do, everything's fly by wire. So this is actually control for the steering right here. And we also have a remote control that's handheld as well. Cost on that steering system, 25 grand. In all, the pilot house is wired with $100,000 worth of top of the line electronics. Tim designed the computer system that will troubleshoot any problem before it happens. Just like a heart monitor in the hospital, this is what this is for your boat. It's monitoring the heart of every system on the boat. We're using a touchscreen computer, and basically we're able to detect failures before they come up. The information is accessible at any time, anywhere, on monitors located throughout the vessel. This screen is located between the main deck salon and the galley. It's a good spot in the boat for a central information system. So we, we give you control of everything. The music system is here. You can control the volume of your stereo. You can control your lighting. If you want more information, you can go to your engine room camera. Keeping family safe was Tim's first priority. But comfort was equally important. The main deck is where most of the action happens. When the weather permits, an outdoor deck and grill allow for barbecuing and chilling out in the open air. But Tim also wanted a retreat where family could kick back and enjoy the views without worrying about inclement weather. Just inside is the main salon with a state-of-the-art entertainment system and a large dining area. Since most people eventually gravitate to the kitchen, this galley offers plenty of room to both cook and hang out. Even more epic, check out the man-sized master suite, which stretches the full width of the main deck. It's got a king-sized bed with a 12-inch memory foam mattress, built-in entertainment center, got Lutron shades that are electric. $5,000 worth of heated tile floors warm your feet in the master bath, and there's plenty of room to spread out in the solid marble shower. Four other staterooms occupy the lower deck. Each is built for comfort and, surprisingly, with the same commitment to very robust and weighty materials. In fact, there's about $100,000 worth of full granite and marble used throughout the yacht. 
We can use granite, marble, all we want, and all we're doing is helping this boat pull it down in the water to where we want to be, which is partly what makes this boat so safe. The engine room is designed to accommodate the worst case scenario with space to make repairs. When you walk in here and things are going wrong, you need to be able to figure out what's going on. So we basically designed this engine room to where it's very easy to get to the parts. It might be a thousand miles from nowhere, and the only person that can keep this boat running is you. For all its luxury, Tim first and foremost emphasizes the all seas seaworthiness. This mega yacht was built for distance and endurance. She may not look it, but the all seas is a floating tank made with $250,000 worth of steel and aluminum. You're not gonna end up sinking this thing. Tim spent three years creating the double plated hull that will endure almost any collision. Should the unthinkable happen, four watertight compartments can be sealed off to protect the vessel and those on board. This right here divides off our first and second chambers on the boat, and should for some reason the hull be punctured and we're taking in water in either one of these chambers, this is the door that would seal these two areas off from each other and allow us to keep water from sinking the boat. Even the windows are designed to take a beating. We learned from fishing boats that go up to the Bering Sea that were hit with 75, 80 foot waves that if you go too wide with your windows, you're going to expose yourself to the possibility of a wave breaking them out. So we make sure our windows are not to exceed 24 inches and come close to at least an inch of thickness. The All Seas is powered by twin KT-19 Cummins engines and can go 5,000 miles before needing to be refueled. 7,000 gallons of fuel goes on this boat, so you might be over $20,000 just fueling this boat up. But the good news is you can go a long ways. So what does it cost to travel the world in epic style, knowing you also have the muscle to take on wicked weather or other dangers of the high seas? That's coming up. Then, a boat named after a winery with its own 200-bottle wine collection and a retractable bar. All Seas is a long-range luxury yacht built to withstand anything a global cruise might bring. With a network of high-tech gadgets, this 92-foot yacht has five staterooms, seven heads, a kitchen to rival most homes, and space to relax, including a sun deck with a hot tub. Traveling the world is a priceless experience. But to do it as owner of the All Seas, that pleasure will cost you $7.5 million. Of all the ships that fly the Great Lakes, it takes a special one to turn heads. Which is what drove Dave and Cheryl Copham to custom build this epic stunner that stretches more than 100 feet in length. We didn't want to have a boat that everyone else had or anyone else had. She's called the Tow Cologne, which means the best in Greek, and that she is. On the Copham's must-have list for their home away from home? Tons of room to entertain. A massive master suite extra bedroom so friends can spend the night, and of course, a hot tub to relax in. The Cobhams also wanted their yacht to fill their entire 100-foot slip. They didn't want just any old boat on the market. We had a dock limitation at our marina of 101 feet, and there aren't many 100-foot boats, period. You know, our choice was to build or accept the fact that we'll have a boat like somebody else has, which we didn't want to do. <laughs> That left one choice, a custom build that would push the limits. Tonk alone has more than 3,200 square feet of living space. More than 2,000 of that is enclosed. One of David's favorite places to hang out is up top in the Sky Lounge. His personal library has a domed ceiling, which was hand-painted by their daughter as a tribute to the Tonk alone's winery namesake. Electric glass doors lead to another al fresco dining area and that all-important hot tub, big enough to accommodate six. And just in case they feel the need for even more speed, a 14-foot jet cat is stored up here, as well as a fun way to hit the road. The motor scooters are our favorite, and uh, they're really roadworthy Vespas that we can 
um, used, especially like in the Bahamas or in the islands when they're going from spot to spot. Up top in the pilot house, Captain Pierre Osset has a 180 degree view. And with built in multi angle monitors, he can keep an eye on everything. There are five cameras installed around the yacht, including one in the engine room. State of the art navigation and power management systems make piloting this baby a snap. When a breaker does pop, you'll hear an alarm uh, instead of me fishing around to see what happened. And everything that is monitored up here in the pilot house can also be accessed remotely. I could use my iPad or, or my phone and still control the vessel here on board. And if we're off the boat, if there's an alarm, uh, it'll text whoever's on watch to their cell phone what alarm has just gone off. One level down, the main deck has an outside dining area to take advantage of the fresh air and views. Another set of automatic doors lead to the grand salon and dining area. When the Coppins are relaxing, the large screen television is up and their bar is down to sitting level. When the party is on, the TV disappears and the bar rises to new heights. Dave and Cheryl named this boat Toke Alone after their favorite high-end winery in Napa, California, which is also what they stock in the custom wine cooler that's restocked on a regular basis. The galley is in constant use while at sail and helps the crew of four maintain five-star hotel service for those on board. Everything here is top of the line. Hidden at the back of the galley is stairway access to the crew's private rooms. For guests on the Tokalone, a wooden spiral staircase in the Grand Salon leads to a luxury stateroom with a king-sized bed, built-in custom dressers, and brilliant his and hers bathrooms. Her side has a bathtub and the two are connected by a shower. To get every detail right on their custom floating playground, the Coppums reached out to a company with a track record for building boats big and bad, Burger Yachts. It took two years to design and build the Tokalone. David and his yacht captain, Pierre Osset, made countless trips to Wisconsin, where the boat was manufactured to exacting specifications. There's hardly an inch that we have not looked at, thought about, talked about. Mm -hmm and compromise with the builder. David spends at least 60 days a year on board. He looks at the boat as a second home. A second home that can tear up the lake at an impressive clip. Crafted out of aluminum alloy, Tokalone can top out at almost 28 knots, or more than 32 miles an hour, which is much faster than other yachts her size. To achieve this kind of speed, they cut back on anything that might add weight, including heavy wood. The floor is honeycombed, just a, a veneer covered, and all the woodwork is all veneered so and put on things so it could maintain a lightweight so it could go fast. Dave thought of just about everything when building the toke alone. So what does it cost to be living large and moving fast on the high seas? With a name that means best in Greek, the toke alone is 101 feet long and faster than most other vessels her size. With 3,200 square feet, this boat is built for a party on the high seas with an adjustable bar, a 200 bottle wine cooler, and more than enough toys on board to keep everyone entertained. Dave and Cheryl Coppa wanted a one of a kind yacht, and they believe they got their money's worth at $13 million. These are super yachts. From a retrofitted speed demon to a massive ship that eats waves for lunch and a Bond-like boat that transforms to become a party on the water. From a Seattle water fortress that can take on anything, to one that hauls its own car, and another that packs its own wine collection. These floating villas are truly epic.
I've been building boats for over 30 years. One of the things that always troubled me was the lack of information on the boat. And so being a techie in my previous life, I wrote software just for the boat that basically gives you all the information you can imagine at your fingertips on the boat. Even the power consumption on the boat is captured. The amount of amps that are being drawn off of the shore power or your generators. It's all on the screen, it's all there, and it's available not only in the engine room, but we make it available. Every computer on the boat has accessibility to this system. Here's a trend chart here. We can pull this one up, and now you can see basically what's going on there. These are all the amperages on the boat. This tells us where we're at there. And then we can also pull up the main engine panels here. And so this is the main engines. Same thing, we can come in, we can select the different items. So we can take gear pressure. There'll be people who will argue all day long about you should have one engine or two engines. One engine, obviously, half the maintenance, better fuel economy. Uh, these engines are bulletproof. You don't need two. There's a wing engine in case of a problem. There's a smaller engine that comes with the single engine boats uh, as a backup. Either one of my engines will run the boat at max cruising speed. So not only do I have two engines, but I have two engines that are probably overpowered. There are some other two engine boats out there that uh, have smaller engines than what I have. But again, it's, it's a security thing. Yeah, you can fix stuff, but I'd rather fix it when I get back to shore and not have to try to fix it out there while we're out in the middle of the ocean. Another nice thing with, with the twin engines, I'm running at a low RPM since I have, I have two running all the time. The engines are MTUs, which are, well, they're Detroit diesels, but MTU bought them a few years ago, so now they're MTUs, but they're the old Detroit diesel, tried and true uh, diesel engines. I run at about 1,200 RPMs at cruise and uh, very little vibration because we're, we're not pushing the engines hard at all. So with less vibration, there's less noise, much less fatiguing if you're out four or five days on the water. Uh, running at high RPMs is it, tiresome. So with the two engines, I don't have to push them hard. I have the redundancy and I have a little, uh, I have a little quieter boat, I think, because of the, uh, the twins. And the wet exhaust on the twin engines versus the dry exhaust on the single, again, is quieter and less fatiguing uh, over a long trip. Some were easier to work with than others. We got some funny looks from the guys at the, uh, at the boat yard building the boat. But I think at the end, they were real proud of, uh, of what they did. If you look at the furniture, they made the furniture for us as well, not just the, uh, not just the veneers on the walls, but uh, everything in here was made by the uh, yard in Nordhaven. Yeah, one of my, my favorite Nordhaven story, when I was at the yard in Taiwan, uh, one of their salesmen, and salesmen are universal, uh, I told them what I wanted. I told them I wanted ebony uh, for our major wood in, in the salon area, and I wanted everything around it. I didn't want any 90 degrees, because if somebody falls, you don't want any corners. So I wanted everything around it in the boat. I didn't understand that it's a difficult thing to do like to, uh, to bend ebony. But uh, when I asked the salesman or told the salesman this is what we wanted to do, he told his head carpenter two minutes of heated exchange between the two of them in Chinese, not knowing exactly what they were saying, but I got the gist that uh, the carpenter wasn't happy with my choice. After the uh, conversation was over, the salesman turned to me and said, it won't be a problem at all. So uh, yeah, so some things are universal. The most important thing I believe on this boat is the helideck. I fly an Augusta 109, which is one of the larger helicopters in the world. And Lightstar has a 25-foot radius on the helideck. You know, it's not too large where you can't fit it in certain docks around the world, um, and it's not too wide. So in, especially in San Diego, if you have anything over this length, you start having to have to ferry in your passengers and stuff like that. So as far as Lightstar comes, it's a very efficient boat when, when you need to be where you want to be. Yeah, as far as needs, this boat is a very good helicopter operational boat. <laughs>